Uh, I think with this, you're going to continue to hear more. I uh, last month I started a a pretty decent bet that oil will continue to take a tumble um, over the next few uh, months up to a year, and I think you're going to hear more of that in September and why. Uh, so if anybody had the opportunity to read the OPEC Plus notes coming out of the June July meeting for OPEC, uh, they basically have two things in particular that I want you to be aware of. So they have a 3 million barrel. I don't know why I have this out. We have a 3 million barrel, um, basically involuntary cut. So everybody is actually having to cut 3 million barrels. Obviously, some people are cutting a couple hundred thousand. Some people are cutting more than that. But overall, throughout OPEC, it's a, um, a 3 million barrel cut. Then there's an additional 2.2 2 million barrel voluntary cut, and that was extended uh, until the end of September. So beginning in October up until the end of next year, there will be uh, continued ramp ups that the folks that have taken the voluntary cuts will be able to take advantage of that. Why is that important? Well, oil prices are pretty much already well in balanced or oil market is pretty much already well in balanced. Uh, the United States is at all time highs in oil production. Guyana continues to ramp up. Brazil continues to do extremely well. We continue to find more oil off the coast of Namibia. And um, everybody just keeps investing, right? Um, and uh, I don't necessarily see a slowdown. Um, so even though you've had a lot of CapEx go towards uh, buybacks rather than actually reinvesting back into uh, the oil companies themselves and their products and their fields, Unfortunately, there's just a lot of Middle Eastern oil out there that, you know, is continuing to be made. And why is that important to acknowledge? You know, I don't think, and we've talked about this in the past many a times, but maybe not necessarily on Cashflow Chronicles. A lot of these oil companies uh, in the Middle East, and, and more so specifically the countries in the Middle East, are welfare states. So generally, the majority of their money comes from selling oil and gas. Um, depending on what nation you are. Some people are more dependent on the gas production. Some people are more dependent on the oil production. But a lot of those guys, and this is a very general term, but a lot of those guys, and meaning countries, break even about $80 a barrel. So if you're breaking even $80 a barrel, technically you're already losing money because we're now trading at Brent below $80 a barrel. It's at $73.35 right now. West Texas Intermediate, just below 70 What's the other way that you will be able to break even? So to be able to offset that uh, $80 a barrel, you can produce more oil. Now, obviously, that uh, produces another strain on the actual market itself because not everyone can just raise production because then you'll have a supply-demand imbalance, and it's only going to exacerbate the problem. So you're going to have some some real issues in the next 12 months as to who's going to balk first, right? Is the price actually going to dip into the low 60s, high 50s, and people are actually going to start to choke back to be able to get the supply demand balance uh, back in order, which happened back in 2014, 2015 timeframe, uh, which was when we saw oil go from like $80, $85 for WTI down to the $30 range. So is that going to repeat itself? Uh, or are people going to actually come and, and play ball, right? And in the December OPEC meeting, they'll potentially extend those voluntary cuts. And I think that that's really what you're going to be hearing about um, with respect to OPEC specifically. But a lot of that is on the backdrop of really this softening of uh, the economies globally, right? So China is obviously doing very poorly. We'll probably ask Chris because he probably knows a little bit more about that. Uh, but you have a lot of economies softening around the world. You're seeing uh, economic data starting to show that things are starting to slow down, even though we just had 3% GDP growth. In the last quarter, we're starting to see jobless claims increase. We're starting to see other economies really starting to struggle, which is why some of these economies are actually starting to cut interest rates already. So if you think about it in that perspective, that means that people are starting to see slowing. And if you are in the backdrop of a recession, you already have oversupply. 
the demand is strong at over 100 million barrels, but uh, at the same time, um, you know, the supply is just way up there, right? So even though you have a big supply, uh, or sorry, big demand, you know, if you have an oversupply of it, you're just unfortunately going to be in a massive imbalance. So that's currently the state of the oil markets. Now, I don't necessarily know what's going to happen, how aggressively these guys are going to push. I do know there are several com countries looking to increase production uh, very quickly. Libya was one, and obviously that is going under some geopolitical turmoil right now. Uh, and then obviously you have the UAE and several others that are also trying to increase production. And so once a lot of these voluntary production cuts kind of roll off at the end of September, you're going to be kind of in no man's land for October, November, until mid-December in that OPEC meeting. So I'm sure that's going to be a continued conversation. And I feel like unless there's an emergency OPEC meeting, you'll continue to see oil prices be very volatile from here. So keep in mind, I mostly look after WTI because I work in the U.S. and the majority of the U.S. works off of WTI, which is West Texas Intermediate. It's the the sweet or very low sulfur type of oil. And then you have Brent, which is a little bit different of a grade. And that's mostly coming from the um, sort of the Europe area. So there's a bunch of different types of crudes and different grades and, and everything of the like. But those are the two that I mostly keep track of, WTI being the one that I'm most concerned about because that's what majority of pays UDOC bills is Gulf of Mexico. But there's other things in there as well. So anyway... Um, let me go through the, uh, the Q and a, and then hopefully Mr. Patel will be joining us. But before that, we have a message from our sponsors. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. Greed is good. This doc is.